My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and today's Everyday Office video is about Pivot Table 101, one of the most highly requested topics anywhere for me happens to be Pivot Tables. Pivot Tables, Pivot Tables, Pivot Tables. Uh, Marsha, 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 right? So what I'm going to do is over the next few videos, I'm going to illustrate some of the bigger points of how pivot tables work, um, why they're useful, and then also sort of how we customize them to specific situations. Uh, we're going to start off with this video, um, understanding what a pivot table is, what it does for us, and why you would want to make one, as well as how you actually do make one. If you want this uh, sample spreadsheet, uh, you can go to the blog post listed in the description down below. Uh, that will have the downloadable Excel spreadsheet and you can follow along with what I'm doing live. So to begin with, what is a pivot table and why do I care? Well, right here on this sheet, I have side by side um, some data over on the left, a pivot table in the middle and a pivot chart on the right. So the data, when you look at the original data, this is of course expense data, but it could be anything. It could be your customers, it could be your products, it could be events, it could be properties, uh, it could be locations, it could be any type of data that needs to be saved into an Excel spreadsheet or even into a database. Because of course our companies run on this data. In fact, our personal lives run on this data too. Understanding where you're spending your money so that you can budget it is just as much a personal issue as it is a business issue. But when we keep these lists, the lists themselves don't actually do what we want them to do. The list itself is data, which can be helpful, but is not intrinsically helpful. When I look at this data, there's really no way for me to figure out what's happening with rent or payroll or transportation and whether those things are good or bad or anything. And so what we need to do is we need to create a summary, some kind of report based on the original data that gives us an insight, that gives us something useful that we can actually work from. And so over on the right, that's where the pivot table comes in. As you can see, I've made a summary report here on the right that tells us how much money we're spending on payroll versus rent versus maintenance. And simply creating this little table right here that summarizes what's in the original table gives us far more information than the original table does. And so these summaries, these reports, this is exactly why the pivot table is useful because creating one of these is of course going to be critical to being able to decide whether we need to increase or decrease payroll and things like that. And then on top of that, creating these uh, pivot tables is incredibly simple, it is one of the easiest things that you can possibly imagine. Let me go ahead and show you how it's done. So in going over to the next tab, the Creating Pivot Tables tab, you can see that I've created some data here that is even more robust. It's got more stuff going on. And again, the actual data itself is not really that important. This is, of course, just made up data about some properties that we have sold at our company. But when you look at this data, you see things like, okay, well, some of it was sold in 2013 and some was sold in 2015. That's interesting. Some of it was residential and some of it was commercial. That's interesting. Some of it was in the mountain region. Some of it was in the eastern region. And we know what the properties appraised for and what they were acquired for and what they cost us to maintain and what we sold them for. And so this data is, of course, critical to the business. But until we can create a report from it, we can't actually do anything. So what are we going to do with this? Well, the first thing we've got to do is tell ourselves a little story. What exactly is it that you'd like to know from this data? Is it maybe total sale price? broken down by whether they were residential or commercial properties so that we know whether we're selling more residential properties or more commercial properties. Or maybe it's the number of residential and commercial properties. 
Or maybe it's the total appraised value of all the properties in each of the regions. Or maybe it's the total maintenance fees that we had to spend on the properties that each of these different agents is maintaining. Any one of these things could be, could be the useful information we need. So I think the story I'm going to tell myself is that I want to know what the total acquisition costs were per region. So we know how much money we're spending in each of these different regions to acquire the properties in the first place. Now that I've done that, now that I've come up with what the report should be, it's time to generate that report. I click somewhere on the data. I'm on cell uh, E6 here, but it could just as easily be anything else within this uh, set of data. So again, E6 right there. And I go to insert up at the top of my screen and find pivot table. So click pivot table over on the left hand side. Go ahead and uh, make sure that it identified the table correctly. It did, it selected all the way up to the top, all the way over to the right, things are looking good there. And then the second question is, do you want this in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet? And really the question here is, um, by putting it into a new worksheet, you're separating out the raw data from the presentation of the report. And that can be a really helpful thing to keep things clean for people's brains, uh, not to have too much going on, and also to keep people out of the spreadsheets that they're not supposed to have access to. So by creating a brand new sheet that's devoted to the report, people can mess with the report without accidentally messing up the original data. So I like new worksheet, generally speaking. Click OK. And as you can see, it's a new empty pivot table with four boxes in the bottom right hand corner. Now we're going to leave off filtering for the moment. That's going to be a future exercise. And we're going to uh, work with columns, rows, and values. Now values is very simple. The little sigma icon that's here next to values lets you know that this is where the calculations happen. So when we told ourselves the story, we wanted to know total acquisition cost. And so what we do is right over here in the panel on the right, we look for that acquisition cost field that we were talking about earlier, and we say, I need to add this to the values box. You can do this by clicking and dragging acquisition cost to the values box and letting go. But as you can see, you can also click this checkbox, turn it off, turn it back on again, and the acquisition cost either shows up or disappears from the values field. And then I want to know this information based off of region. And once again, I can grab region and drag it into the rows box, or alternatively, I can click the checkbox for region and turn it off and turn it back on again. Okay, so we've got our initial report. Our initial report tells us the total acquisition costs per each of the different regions. Now, there are a few things that I might wanna change here. Uh, first of all, it says sum of acquisition cost. Maybe this would be total costs. Um, secondly, it's sort of raw numbers here without commas and dollar signs and things. Maybe I want to fix that. And thirdly, maybe I want to sort it to know which is the highest of the acquisition costs. So we can do all those things. Click on sum of acquisition cost in the bottom right hand corner and you'll see that you can choose value field settings. By going to value field settings, you can choose to call this total acquisition costs. Oops, costs. You can also format this using the number format button and choose something like accounting format to put the dollar signs and the commas and things like that on there. Hit OK and hit OK and there you go. So that's prettier. But again, I wanted to go ahead and sort this, so I will click somewhere within this column of data, go up to the uh, data tab at the top of the screen, and sort it Z to A, so that our highest dollar value, the acquisition cost of Mountain, is up at the top, and the lowest one of United Kingdom is down at the bottom. Now, the very first time I taught this class, I had somebody raise their hand and they said, Neil, why do they call it a pivot table? 
And I remember just standing there in the classroom looking stupefied because I'd never asked myself that question. Why do they call it a pivot table? And so I looked it up afterwards and they call it a pivot table because it's very easy to pivot from one type of report to a different one. So now if I no longer care what the total acquisition costs are per region, it's incredibly easy to come over here to the right to uncheck the checkbox for region and to uncheck the checkbox for acquisition cost and instead create a report that tells us based off of agent, clicking the checkbox there for lead agent, uh, what are our total sales? Click the checkbox down here for sale price. And as you can see, there's the sum total of the sale price broken down by who the agent is. Now I'd want to repeat my steps from earlier, clicking on sum of sale price, going to value field settings, calling it maybe uh, total sales, and using the number formatting of accounting like that, click OK and click OK. Uh, and then again, maybe I want to click somewhere in this column here and sort Z to A. There you go. But notice how fast that was. Even with me talking about it and trying to move a little bit slower so it's caught on video well, um, it takes only seconds to create this report, to shift from one type of report to another in a situation that calls for different kinds of information. So that's why you create a pivot table and how you create a pivot table. In tomorrow's video, I'm going to show you how to um, format this and do different things with your numbers. And then in the next day's uh, video, I'm going to show you how to filter those results. So stick around for those.